Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Moaz Mustafa, and I am the executive director of the Syrian Emergency Task Force. And I would like to welcome everyone for, for attending this, um, this important event and fundraiser um, that marks the end of the holy month of Ramadan and the beginning of Eid coming up soon. Um, and we are very excited to have you all join us here today. Um, I've worked uh, at SETF for the last uh, 11 years, and it's been the greatest honor um, of my life to be able to work with an amazing, dedicated team um, that are passionate about protecting human life and helping change and save lives in Syria every day. And today you'll hear about some of the work of the Syrian Emergency Task Force, um, uh, an organization that focuses primarily on the advocacy for the end of the killing of civilians in Syria, uh, but also the documentation of war crimes and the pursuit uh, of accountability and justice um, and humanitarian work that every day helps change the lives of some of the people in, in the most need. Um, today, you'll hear from uh, amazing speakers, um, uh, both Syrian and non-Syrian, that have come to understand the conflict and what's happening in Syria and also understand the important role of the Syrian Emergency Task Force. Um, so I really um, hope that you all can learn um, more and more about SETF uh, and can find it in your heart to support, especially at a time when so many Syrians um, are in need of, of hope, of inspiration, and also deserve the chance to celebrate uh, with, with all other, uh, with their holidays like Eid that's coming up. Uh, for so many of them. So first of all, I would like to introduce our Director of Humanitarian Programs and Outreach, who will discuss uh, and give you an overview of some of our important humanitarian programs on the ground in Syria. Um, uh, and uh, she's, uh, she's regularly between, Syri between the Turkish-Syria border um, and uh, Washington and, and based in Arkansas, um, uh, and has been working with us for the last uh, six years. Um, so, Natalie Larison, please. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for uh, tuning in today. It's really my pleasure uh, to be amongst uh, this audience. My name is Natalie Larison, and I am the Director of Humanitarian Programs for the Syrian Emergency Task Force. And I would love to tell you briefly how SETF is saving and changing lives while working on the ending of atrocities in Syria and pursuing accountability. Uh, today, we have five distinct humanitarian programs, and so I'd like to tell you uh, about those. First is the Key Witness Fund. Uh, through this fund, SETF supports families of victims and witnesses to war crimes, including individuals like Caesar, who brought out 55,000 photos of civilians tortured to death. And the Grave Digger, a witness to mass graves. This fund allows multiple war crimes prosecutions to take place by providing a safety net for the heroes exposing these war crimes. Um, and with more support for the for the Key Witness Fund, we hope that we can continue um, adding more prosecutions uh, to this list that we've began. The second humanitarian program that we are proud uh, to be uh, facilitators of is Rukban, uh, is in Rukban. We have a no-cost pharmacy called Hope Pharmacy. Um, and this is located in Rukban camp, which is on the Jordanian-Iraqi-Syrian border inside Syria. Um, it's completely under siege and has been by Russia and the Assad regime. Um, and the only source of medicine is provided free of charge uh, from the Hope Pharmacy to over 10,000 civilians, um, over half of which are children. Half of the population of Rukban camp are children. SETF is the only NGO or entity uh, operating in this forgotten camp that has no doctors and no hospitals. With more support for this program, we can provide even more life-saving aid each month um, to these people. The third uh, humanitarian program is called the Wisdom House. It's a kindergarten uh, in, in the Aleppo side of Syria. And for the last six years, educated hundreds of little boys and girls, uh, three to five years old. They have have uh, become so close to our um, to our supporters uh, that people are actually exchanging messages with them on a regular basis through our team and through the teachers. 
Uh, we write letters of hope for Syria that from all over the world, from people like you, uh, in which the students actually uh, decorate the walls of their school with these hopes, uh, with these messages of hope. Um, and they say that this is just as important as uh, the physical uh, uh, support that we give them is the hope and never forgetting, uh, never forgetting them and always showing them that people around the world care. The generous supporters of the Wisdom House not only educate children, but have also helped save their lives. Um, I would love to show you a little clip uh, just last week when uh, one of the classes at the student uh, at the Wisdom House uh, shared a video of the students introducing themselves. So if we can play that video, um, I would love for you to meet some of them. And we can wait on this video. Uh, it'll be special any time that we play it. Um, so if you want to learn more about Letters of Hope and connecting directly with these students, um, in the chat we will write uh, where you can send your Letters of Hope. Every few months we actually travel to the Turkish-Syrian border um, where these letters and other small items that people create um, and want to donate to the students, we're able to bring them all the way uh, to the Wisdom House students. Um, and thankfully, we're able to follow up with those, uh, with the teachers, and see uh, who was able to see uh, your letter. My name Abir. My name Hassan. My name Hamidi. My name Sumaya. My name Ahmad. My name Ibrahim. My name Abdul Sabiya. My name Hala. My name Zay. Thank you so much. Um, by the end of each year of kindergarten, the students are able to read, they're able to write, they have significantly higher confidence and have friends who that uh, who they got to meet at kindergarten because of this opportunity. Uh, so I hope that you can learn more about the Wisdom House and connect to them directly as well. We also have Tomorrow's Dawn Women's Center, which is a women's center that has educated hundreds of women who have been widowed by war. It is located in Idlib, Syria as well. Um, we also started uh, uh, incorporating education classes for secondary students this year. We have five new education classes, and this was a response to the huge need in this community for secondary students to make up uh, some of the years of school that they missed with basic courses, um, such as uh, physics, uh, math, English, Arabic. Um, and so this is a wonderful program and we could use all the support that we can get to connect to these students and provide more provide more opportunities to the people in this community. Um, finally, our newest program is called the House of Healing. And this is another amazing program uh, by SCTF supported by people like you. Um, and it is people who are uh, Syrian and their displaced families who are provided shelter and rehabilitation from horrific war injuries as a result of Russia, Assad, and Iran's bombing of civilians. Um, this is emergency housing for Syrians who are able to be temporarily allowed into Turkey uh, to receive treatment. And so this is a safe place where we keep families together while they go through this process of, of receiving treatment and uh, attending appointments and surgeries and such. And so it's my pleasure uh, to show you all a video uh, recently of the team, along with Ambassador Rapp uh, a few months ago when we visited the border of uh, uh, Turkey and Syria and visited the House of Healing ourselves. And so I would love for you guys to enjoy watching this video of a uh, Bahar media team following the SCTF team uh, on a on a our trip to the border. Room number one. 
We were 50 meters, 5 meters, 5 meters, 5 meters, 5 meters, 200 human beings. And, and that is something that's the, the most important thing in the world for we in America, for, for organizations that are, that are helping. We want you safe and, and well. And, and to grow up in a, in a free Syria with uh, with with your own family. God willing, God willing. God bless you all. Allah ya Rabbi yahfikum ya jami'a. Thank you all so much. And next we are going to hear um, from our English teacher, who is also the principal at the Wisdom House Kindergarten, um, addressing uh, people around the world during Ramadan, uh, uh, a message from the ground from Idlib, Syria. Uh, Mumina is a dear friend uh, since we started this project. Our team is in touch with her every single day. Um, and so I hope that you all uh, are able to enjoy this video sent from Syria from Mumina at the Wisdom House. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته معكم أختكم في الله مؤمنة من دار الحكمة أشعر بالسعادة وأحمد الله لأنني ولأول مرة أخاطب مسلمين مثلي بصد فرحة لا توصف تواصلت كثيرا مع أناس من غير ديننا فإنهم يهتمون بنا بصد ويساندوننا ويقفون معنا حتى أنهم يرسلون لنا رسائل الأمل التي تبث فينا وفي أطفالنا وبكل السوريين أملا الأمل بأن صوتنا مسموع وهناك من يهتم لأمرنا فكم هو حزين أنني لا ألاقي إخوتي من ملتي يقفون معي وأتذكر قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن النعمان بن البشير رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراحمهم Thank you all very much. I'm so sorry for the technical difficulties, but I am going to pass it back to Moaz. Um, and so thank you all so much for listening um, and hearing about our humanitarian programs um, and how you can help SUTF help people in Syria. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Natalie, for that uh, important and powerful presentation. And do excuse us on, on the videos. I know that they're cutting out a little bit, but I hope that you can get um, 
sort of the the main message uh, and and so on we can share those uh, as well with you uh, in follow up after this program now i already kind of screw messed up the the flow of the program because we were supposed to start off with sister russia uh, giving us a, a short recitation of the holy quran uh, and so i will now pass it on to sister russia for that and then we will also continue with the program so sister russia please uh, forgive me uh, and, no, no problem please. i was just waiting for my turn but that, that that's fine أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح لله ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم له ملك السماوات والأرض يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم هو الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش يعلم ما يرج في الأرض وما يخرج منها وما ينزل من السماء وما يعرج فيها وهو معكم أينما كنتم والله بما تعملون بصير له ملك السماوات والأرض وإلى الله ترجع الأمور يورج الليل في النهار ويورج النهار في الليل وهو عليم بذات الصدور آمنوا بالله ورسوله وأنفقوا مما جعلكم مستخلفين فيه فالذين آمنوا منكم وأنفقوا لهم أجر كبير وما لكم لا تؤمنون بالله والرسول يدعوكم لتؤمنوا بربكم وقد أخذ ميثاقكم إن كنتم مؤمنين هو الذي ينزل على عبده آيات بينات ليخرجكم ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وإن الله بكم لرؤوف رحيم In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Ayah number one, verse number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whatever is in the heavens and the earth glorifies Allah. For he is the Almighty, all wise. To him belongs, this is verse number two, to him belongs the kingdom uh, of the heavens and the earth. He gives life and causes death. And he is the most capable of everything. And verse number three, He is the first and he is the last. He is the most high and the most near. And he has perfect knowledge of all things. Verse number four. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days, then established himself on the throne. He knows whatever goes into the earth and whatever goes out of it, and whatever descends from the sky and whatever ascends into it. And he is with you wherever you are. For Allah is all seeing of what you do. Verse number five. To him belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, and to Allah all matters are returned. Verse number six. He merges the night into the day and the day into the night, and he knows best what is hidden in the hearts. Verse number seven. Believe in Allah and his messenger and donate. That's why this is the reason I'm sharing these verses today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is Surah Al-Hadid. Um, and subhanallah, Allah says, believe in Allah and his messenger and donate from what he has entrusted you with. So those of you who believe and donate will have a mighty reward. Verse number eight. And why don't you believe in Allah while the messenger is inviting you to have faith in your Lord? Although he has already taken your covenant, if you were ever, if you uh, will ever believe. Verse number nine. He is the, Allah says, he is the one who sends down clear revelations to his servant to bring you out of darkness into the light. For indeed, Allah is the ever gracious, most merciful to you. Verse number 10. And I'll stop here because of the time. 
Allah says in this ayah number 10, we'll elaborate on these ayat later on when I have time to speak about uh, the importance of donations. So Allah says, and why should you not spend in the cause of Allah while Allah is the sole inheritor of the heavens and the earth? So may Allah help us all believe in him and donate for his sake and help others. And thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much, Sister Rasha, um, for that beautiful recitation and for the translation. Um, and thank you for joining us and for constantly supporting um, the work of the Syrian Emergency Task Force uh, and the support of the Syrian people. Um, next, uh, we have uh, uh, an amazing speaker who has one of the most inspirational stories of anyone um, that I've ever read or heard or, or had the pleasure of meeting, and it's been wonderful to 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 work uh with someone who i consider like a brother um and omar who helps with the detainee affairs of the syrian emergency task force who is a student at georgetown university um and an inspirational survivor and activist uh on all sorts of things um has joined us now and uh, i'll turn it over to you omar thank you moaz uh, salam alaikum good afternoon um everyone it's not the first time we, we, we gathered here to talk about Syria. It's not the first time we're trying to, uh, to, to bring awareness about what's going on in, in Syria today after years of conflict, after years of struggling. Uh, but I, we will try to make the best of, this, of these minutes we have to talk about. Um, in days like this in, in Syrian detention centers, uh, the prisoners are uh, brutally terrified uh, by the guards. Um, because the guards are far from believing in God. If they believed in God, they wouldn't do what they were doing. And one of the first things they tell you when you arrive to Saitna prison is that here there is no God. Um, and even when they're beating you with, with, uh, with heavy sticks or, you know, making you suffer in pain, you're not even allowed to say God, Ya Allah, or Oh my God. Uh, that will increase the pain they will, they will, uh, they are making it on you um in days like this they they bring you food and they force you to eat uh, while in the other days they will um they will let you starve uh, but because they know you may be fasting you may be you know um following your your religious um you know guidance and instructions and uh, they want to force you to to do the opposite of that and make you uh muftar every day of ramadan in days like this too, um, in May, the, we're, the days where we're going to have the Eid this year uh, is also sadly an anniversary for the day my father and my brothers were killed in a massacre on the Syrian coast, my, my hometown, Banyas, my village, al uh, a huge massacre took place. Um, my dad uh, was killed. I would never uh, be able to see my dad again. Uh, my older brother uh, died, and my brother, who was two years younger than me, died as well. Uh, those are important people of my life that I would never be able to see again. I would never, uh, you know, we had this tradition in Syria. You wake up early in the morning, uh, in, in, in the morning of Eid, and you go to the mosque. And the condition with my siblings was, was to run back home and to be the first one to kiss my, my mom and dad's hand um, and got the biggest idea, um, which is the piece of money you got from your parents uh, on Aid. And now I can't get the idea from my father anymore. Uh, now I can't run to kiss my dad's father, uh, my, my dad's hand anymore. Uh, even though I am so much uh, a a free man right now in the West, I won't even be able to go um, and, and kiss my mom's hand either uh, because the war uh, and the Assad regime uh, has managed to force us out of the country uh, to be refugees, to be, um, to, to, be to, some, to some extent weak from, a, from, from that perspective, but at the same time, strong enough to be here together today, strong enough to talk about what we went through, strong enough to uh, use our pain to uh, build the hope that we need to be able to survive um, the, the, these massacres, strong enough to 
uh, do not be tired after talking um, about war for 11 years. You know, if people talk about their own whatever kind of trauma they went through, they get tired of talking about it year after year after year after year or day after day, hour after hour. People get tired of talking about our, their trauma. And we, certain people, manage to get the best out of it. Uh, make our trauma empower us to be here today and to be here tomorrow and to be here the day after tomorrow because i know this won't be the last event unfortunately because you would still need to help syria we would still need to fight for syria we would need to gather again every time but since we're talking uh the task force today i will tell you how i joined the task force um maz the executive director of the syrian emergency task force reached out to me on on social media and we connected and we met for the first time. And when I met Moz, the task force was two people, Natalie and Moz, and also Na Anna. Uh, and there was a very small group of people who are trying to help as much as they can. What surprised me is the fact that these three people in particular could just have totally different life. That's much better life in terms of uh, whatever salary they can get in their life uh, to, to enjoy their time more. And I realized people like Moz are not taking any vacation and uh, taking full responsibility. It's the same thing for Natalie and Anna, who both, all of these three people who grew up in the U.S. and they could worry about something else. They could worry about finding the best job. They could worry about, you know, having the best friends. But they decided to worry and to care about Syria. And month after month, I realized these people are doing the best job I ever imagined could be done for Syria on a, on, on, on the highest possible scale they could they could reach and i was inspired enough to join i was inspired enough to to, to be part of this organization because most importantly that al they allowed me to do what i was doing but with a with a with a with a better audience i have been doing public speaking speaking to people telling people what's going on in syria and uh, the trauma that some people went through and the, the crisis but they taught me how to tell it in a better way they, I, I practiced English with them, you know, I practiced English with Anna and Natalie and Moz, and now we have a bigger team. I'm still practicing English with everyone I talk to, but they gave me another way of telling the story. They told me how to inspire people instead of for scaring people off, because what we went through in Syria is too painful for people to be able to relate to or to understand. So we needed to find a way that is good enough so people can listen to it, be inspired by it, and take actions. Because sometimes when we tell our stories, it's just too hard for people to feel that they can contribute. Because people think about complexity of the conflict. And as I mentioned complexity, I want to tell you, there is no complexity in the Syrian conflict. It's so simple. It's the most simple thing you know. It's people went out to the street asking for freedom and a regime went out killing them. That's it. People asking for freedom and regime denying this right for people, preventing people from achieving their freedom and democracy. And that's why we should keep fighting because it's just simple because we know who is right and who is wrong. This regime committing massacres today and need to be prosecuted for their crimes. And the people deserve to be free. That's why we support the certain people in all the way possible. And to support the Syrian people, you can support them in their advocacy work, you can support the people on the ground, and you can support the people who are actually giving their voices, they, 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 you know, dedicating their entire life to bring awareness, but also the ones who gave their important testimonies, but they can't be with you today. They can't, uh, they can't take you know, any visible actions today. So you have people like Caesar, you have people like the grave digger, you have people um, like, like our friend Mazen al-Hamada, who, who, who was in detention center in Syria. All these people, they, they, they fought and they keep fighting um, for you. But these people are struggling because they live with hidden identity uh, and they need to be supported to be able to survive. And that's why the Syrian Emergency Task Force created the Witness Fund. All these people who are dedicating their life to witness on these crimes that happened in Syria. And they go to the court, they risk their life on a daily basis to be able to tell the truth and to come and to, to allow courts to prosecute people who commit crimes against humanity. All these people need to be supported. They may not be able to, to go to work the way I can do. Uh, that's why we need to support them that way. That's why we have the witness 
uh, fund, which I encourage you to support. It's a place where you allow these voices to exist even from behind, from behind the scene. More than that, we do a lot of uh, political work. We go to uh, to State Department, to the Congress, every place we could go to, European Parliament, any country, any embassy, and we tell them about what's going on in Syria. We tell them what we as Syrians want to to be to become, what we ask them to do, because these countries, many of these countries, they want to help, but they don't know how to do it. And they need an organization like the Syrian Emergency Task Force, who is with a close touch with people on the ground, to come and tell them exactly what to do, to give them guidance all the time. Uh, and that's that's a purpose we serve, is being able to build a bridge between all the people who are trying to help and the people who need the help on the ground in Syria. Also, we help all uh, in as much as we can in all cases that are 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 built against the Syrian regime in terms of legal cases to try to bring justice um, because justice is the, is the thing that everybody's striving for in Syria. Uh, we know it's it's tough to feel after you lost your kid or you lost your brother or being tortured yourself or lost your home. It's tough to feel like you can achieve justice. But it is achievable. At some point, the Syrian people will have peace. At some point, the Syrian people will enjoy democracy and freedom. At some point, the Syrian people will be happy people and during their life have have would think weirdly what is war at some point people would just go back to normal life enjoying everything rebuilding their country and enjoy the the privileges of being in a democratic nation they will but until then you and i need to contribute until, until then you and i need to be here for these people we need to be supportive we need to speak up we need to give when you can give you should give Giving is money, but also giving is using what you enjoy doing to help the people who need your help. Um, so if you have the money to donate, don't, don't hesitate, do it. There are organizations you can trust, like the Syrian Task Force, you can trust in your, your money with, but also there is um, there's actions you can take. Uh, you can use your social media uh, to, to, to build a trend, to build a movement. You can use your, your artistic skills to paint a picture of what's going on in Syria. Because the world needs people that work in policy, the world needs people that work in, in, in legal terms, and people who work in humanitarian, and people who use art, entertainment, to, um, to reach this world. And you will hear from, from our, our dear friend Yara Sabri how you would be able to use the entertainment, how to use uh, what you love doing um, to help the people who need the most help. With that, I would leave you with the thought uh, of contribution, of giving, because you can give and I can give. Regardless of how much, our giving is very appreciated and it's very impactful on the ground. Thank you so much, um, Omar, for, for that. And... Um, and, and it is it is important to give and, and I want to remind everyone that at the time when uh, for Muslims there's the cat a CTF is is uh, an important place that your money can go a long way in helping orphans helping men women elderly helping those that are supporting justice and accountability and, and helping save lives in Syria um, next it's my honor to introduce um, Yara Sabri who is a famous uh, Syrian actress. <clears throat> she comes from a very famous, also artistic family. Um, her father and others ha were, were uh, very important, influential actors as well in Syria. And she is so inspirational because, you know, she has used her voice, she has used her fame, she has used her experience to help her people, um, regardless of, uh, you know, the faith or background or ethnicity of the beautiful mosaic of Syrians. Um, that make up uh, the beautiful country of Syria. Um, and, and so one of the biggest ways that she has been um, so powerful in a voice of conscious um, is by advocating as well on behalf of the detainees and helping people understand what happened to their loved ones. Um, as many of you may know in Syria, there are hundreds of thousands of people that have been detained and that continue to be detained like Omar. Uh, who spoke earlier, um, and, and this has been one of the, the powerful ways that, that Yara has advocated. Uh, and I'll be translating for her <clears throat> during her, her comments uh, to you all. 
فاني سياره انا بتقدمت عن عن حضرتك وحبينا انه نسالك اذا فينا تعطي فكره عن الوضع في سوريا واي شيء بتحبي تضيفي عن معاناه الشعب السوري مرحبا واول شيء العيد قرب كل عام وانتم بخير كلياتكم كل اللي معنا واللي عم يسمعونا ان شاء الله بينعاد على سوريا والسوريين بالخير وبراحه البال وبالفرج القريب ان شاء الله على كل السوريين اللي عايشين بهي الحفه من العالم هلا هيك انا So first of all, I want to say hello uh, and to all of you and welcome you. Uh, I want to say first of all that Eid is around the corner, so uh, ha- you know, a happy Eid to everyone, um, uh, and uh, you know, may God bring a time where um, the oppression is lifted from the Syrian people, uh, and, and and Syrians can celebrate once again. والحقيقة أنه أنا كمان بعتبر حالي واحدة من الناجيات مو بس أنا أنا بعتبر أنه أنا وكل اللي قدروا يطلعوا من من هاي الحفرة بطريقة ما هن طبعا من الناجين اللي هن انتشروا بكل أنحاء العالم ناجين بمعنى ليس كتير واسع لأنه لأنه الأثر النفسي اللي اللي موجود عند كل الناس اللي بتعتبروا حالهم ناجين كمان هو أثر كتير كبير ويمكن يعني ما ينتهي ولكن هن يعني بعتقد انه انه انكتب لهم هي النجاة لحتى يكون لهم دور ما بمستقبل سوريا بطريقه ما. And I also want to say um, that I consider myself um, also a survivor from this sort of dark hole um, and, and, and so many Syrians are, are survivors, survivors that have um, somehow made it through this, this horrific um, situation and have been spread out um, throughout the world. Um, and despite that, despite the struggle um, and, and, and being able to survive that, I think that there is also um, a goal for, for all of us as, as survivors and people that have come out to be able to, to bring forward a message to tell the world about what's happening. فأنا بعتبر إنه إنه من واجب أول شيء أخلاقي وإنساني وديني واللي بدكم إياه هو إنه اللي نجوا من هذا من هذا المكان يحاولوا إنهم يقدموا شيء للناس اللي بعدهم موجودين جوا كل واحد باللي بيقدر يعمله ليس بالضرورة دائما هو مادي وإنما كمان ممكن يكون معنوي كل حدا من من موقعه يلي هو بيقدر عليه ونحن كلياتنا قادرين إن كان يعني بكلمه او ب بفعل او بانه نحن ندعم هدول الناس الموجودين فقط لحتى نضل نقدر نجدد لهم الامل بالحياه. And so it's an obligation, it's it's a religious obligation, a human obligation, a moral obligation, whatever uh, you know fits uh, you know anyone's ideology, but it's an obligation at the end of the day uh, as survivors and as people that have come out of, of what's happened in Syria or, or know of what's happening to 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 do something to take action whether that is a specific a specific act whether that is a donation whether that is giving but really to be a voice for the voiceless for those that remain in Syria for those that have uh, you know survived but remain uh, in this horrific uh, place because our giving our support um, our action renews their hope uh, and that is a moral responsibility for all of us. اللي للاسف انه نحن بمجال شغلنا وعملنا نحن كدراما ما كثير عم نقدر انه نحكي لانه لانه ممنوع انه نحكي الدراما الحقيقيه او اللي بتحكي الواقع ما حدث في سوريا من 2011 حتى هذه اللحظه هو محظور انه انه ينحكى فيه لذلك وبالاساس انا اخترت كمان طريق بالاضافه لعملي بالدراما طريق له علاقة بدعم الناجين من الاعتقال ودعم عائلاتهم وحتى اني حاول كون صوت للمعتقلين اللي هن بداخل السجون حتى تبقى القضية دائما اولوية وموجودة. And so, you know, in, in art, in, in, in drama, in, 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 in sort of the, the entertainment industry, in, in acting in Syria, any speaking or anything and even in general you know and working in, in drama and stuff it's usually not allowed to be able to speak about such things and about what's happening 
Um, but I've done what I can to use both my sort of platform uh, in, in my art and, and also um, just my voice in general to try as much as possible to, to again be a voice for, for those that remain in Syria and especially when it comes to detainees and those that remain in, in Assad's dungeons. Um, being able to raise awareness about what's happening to them, tell the world about, uh, about what news we can find from them, um, but also as much as possible to be a voice for those that, that are remaining in Assad's prisons uh, and dungeons in, in Syria, because uh, it is incredibly important to continuously to highlight that and to make sure that that is a priority, uh, a priority for, for everyone to, to remember uh, what's happening, especially in the detention centers. فأنا من موقعي كشخصية عامة ممكن أكون مؤثرة بالشارع السوري والعربي حاولت أنه أنا أتخذ هذا هذا المكان لأنه لأنه بالنسبة لي قضية المحتقلين هي القضية الأولى بالنسبة للقضية السورية كلها يعني وحل قضية المعتقلين وملف المعتقلين هو حل لكل المشكلة القائمة بسوريا ف وطبعا بالإضافة لمحاولة كمان يعني العمل بموضوع الإغاثة وأن يكون صلة وصل بين منظمات ممكن تعمل بالإغاثة وبين ناس على الأرض من خلال صفحتي أو من خلال تواصلي مع الأرض. And so I try to take my position as a public figure, um, as someone who may uh, be influential, who is known, you know, as, as an actress uh, in, in famous in Syria, is to make sure that I can use my voice to highlight um, what's really important in, in, in detention, the detention of men, women, children, elderly, the, the people that are held in Syria. Um, that to me is the biggest priority. I feel that if we are able to, to attend to that and to help solve it, to help release the detainees um, that, that remain suffering in Assad's dungeons, that that helps solve the entire conflict, that that is a way to resolve um, the, the entire situation and to help bring a transition uh, and to help bring peace to Syria. And so I've made sure uh, to sort of use my voice and, and use my platform, use my uh, you know, public um, uh, profile to be able to, to bring attention to the importance of resolving the situation when it comes to detainees. In addition to the fact that uh, you know, I do all I can to help support also the humanitarian work on the ground, linking uh, between organizations, humanitarian organizations, and those that are in need uh, uh, on the ground in, in Syria uh, as a way of sort of communication and bridging uh, between them, because that's also very important work. حزن بي حتى بقضية المعتقلين وحتى بقضية اللاجئين أو الناس اللي عايشين بدون مخيمات ولكن مثلا قصة مثل قصة عمار الناجي من, ال... من الاعتقال مشواره اللي بدأوا من أول وجديد من الصفر ومن تحت الصفر خلينا نقول لو وصل لمكان بيقدم نموذج يعني رائع جدا عن, عن الناجي من المحرقة وقدر أنه هو يعني يوصل صوته بهي الطريقة ويكون حاضر دائما بكل المنصات هذا شيء إيجابي جدا وبالمقابل كمان اللي أنا مثلا قدرت أعمله هو مشاركة بفيلم هون بكندا هو بيحكي عن قصة كمان ناس كانوا عايشين بالمخيم نتيجة قصف بيتهم من قبل النظام فهن عاشوا بالمخيم ومن المخيم من تمام من تحت الصفر اجوا لهون على كندا وقدروا يعملوا حالة كتير عظيمة وقدروا يعملوا معمل شوكولا وصل للفضاء وكتير يعني أخذ ضجة كتير كبيرة عالميا حتى وقدم نموذج كتير حلو إيجابي عن 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 اللاجئين مثلا. And I also want to speak of of hope uh, and and truly inspiration in in of those people that that we're asking for all of you to support. Um, one example is is Omar. You know, Omar Shugri is someone, and, and keep that picture up because I will translate that part as well. But Omar Shugri is someone who, you know, was a survivor of, of a Holocaust of sorts and is someone who, you know, when he came out and survived this horrific thing was sort of starting from zero or, or below zero, uh, really from nothing. And now you see his voice 
uh, on all of these important platforms, testifying before all of these important bodies, speaking to the world about what's happening, um, getting an education, being able to flourish. Um, and that is something that is truly inspirational. That's something that is really exempl exemplifying what, what hope is. Um, and another story is something that I personally worked on uh, and, and, and made a film about is, is this other family, a family whose home was destroyed by the Assad regime's shelling and bombardment and, and that had to, to become refugees and to live in, 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 a, in a refugee camp under horrific circumstances. And despite that, they also are inspirational. They also remind us of, of the hope that exists within the Syrian people. They were able to survive the hellish situation and the oppression of the Assad regime and its allies. They were able to uh, re-establish themselves. And then in Canada, were able to start a, a beautiful business. I think it's called Peace by Chocolate um, that has become very um, uh, successful, uh, honestly, very famous. Uh, it's, it's been all over the world. And, and, and now they bring, you know, uh, joy boy and, 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 and chocolate to, to so many and have have really also pers you know personify hope uh, and inspiration uh, and it's important to remember these hopeful moments in these dark times هي الفكره انا برايي موضوع التكافل اللي نحن كل عمرنا يعني ربيانين عليه نعرف شو يعني التكافل الاجتماعي كان بمفهومه المجتمع الانساني وحتى مفهومه الديني اللي نحن كمان ربيانين عليه انه دائما يلي يلي بيقدر لازم يعمل اللي ما بيقدر هذا امر الله ما بيقدر بس اللي بيقدر يعمل شيء فهو لازم يعمل آه واكيد في اكثر من طريقه ممكن الواحد يعني احيانا بيكون الانسان بحاجه للصله توصل فانا بشوف كمان المنظمه اللي انتم عم عم ترعوها او عم عندكم مشاريع فيها هي هي مجالها كثير واسع لانه يقدر الانسان يساهم ان كان بدعم مادي إن كان بالموضوع الإغاثي إن كان بالموضوع الحقوقي لأنه هذا شيء كثير مهم كمان اللي عم يشغل فيما يخص الشهود والحقوق وحماية الشهود وإلى آخره فأنا يعني بتمنى من اللي بيقدر يقوم بأي فعل هو قادر إنه يعمله هذا ما صعب إذا بحسنا كلياتنا بنلاقي طريقة إنه نحن نقدم محبتنا ونقدم شعورنا التضامن مع الناس يلي بعدهم موجودين بهالحفره اللي نتمنى طبعا انه بيوم من الايام ترجع بلد نحن نحن بنحلم فيها البلد الحره الديمقراطيه اللي كلياتنا بنتامل انه ننتمي لها. And so uh, you know the the subject of of solidarity and and, and working together it's something that in Syria we, we had you know even religiously you know in, in our faith we we, we learn to 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 work together and work in solidarity that if someone's able to do something they, they do their part and if somebody else is unable to do it you know it's because god didn't give them the ability to do so and, and deserve the help and support but being together and, and being in solidarity is something that that is essential and an important value um, that we share and that's why it's so important to give and to act and to take action when when one can that's that's why it's important to help in any way. And this organization that you all have supported that we are talking about today is an organization that is really working together to do as much as it can to help, whether it is um, in humanitarian work or in the legal and justice work uh, and, and advocacy. Um, and that's why I encourage you to, to, to take action, to help support. Uh, whether it is financially or whether it is in, in any other way that supports this important work. Um, and, and this is an organization that has a very broad uh, sort of uh, amount of responsibilities. So whether you want to be supportive of the humanitarian uh, and, and humanitarian aid work uh, and, and also gives an opportunity to help, especially when it comes to the legal uh, accountability war crimes documentation work, which is also incredibly important. Uh, uh, and important for us to to help bring Syria back. You know, it's it's been this sort of dark hole, but hopefully soon Syria, uh, and, and one day soon Syria will be a place where, where there is peace and justice and, and where people can, can have their country back. Shukran jazeelan ani sayyara ala ala kalimatik wa waqtik wa musharaktik ma'ana. And now um, it is uh, my honor to introduce 
um, uh, one of my my favorite people in the world and someone who has been really a compass and a guide, especially over the last six years to the Syrian Emergency Task Force and is uh, on the national board and the board of trustees of, of SETF, Mr. Jerry Adams. Oz, thank you very much. Uh, what an important uh, event today is. Uh, SATF thanks each of you for your uh, participation. Now that we've done this, I guess, two years in a row, we have a tradition. So an important one for SATF. Again, my name is Jerry Adams. I serve on the SATF Board of Directors, and I've worked with Moz and SCTF over six years, initially focused on the Wisdom House and then added the Women's Center. But then last September, I was invited to serve on the SCTF Board of Directors, and I consider it an honor. What I'd like to do is to ask each of you to consider supporting SCTF. A number already do, and I wanna thank you for that. As an organization, SCTF's impact is extraordinary. As I've gotten to know more about SCTF, I've learned that its focus its focus, its energy on Syria, but it's not taking care of itself or its employees. So over the past seven months, we've been working to improve SETF sustainability as an organization. So along with its impactful humanitarian programs, I'd like you to consider making either a one-time contribution to SETF, or better, if you would consider making a monthly or quarterly contribution ongoingly to SETF, it would be timely and very efficiently used to continue SETF's ability to make the kind of impact you have come to associate with SETF. SETF is now in its 11th year of operation and the challenges ahead are substantial, but SETF is tenaciously taking them head on. Our recent work with Ukraine and the development of the Syrian-Ukraine network is reflective of SETF's innovation, as well as timely collaboration. Ukraine and Syria have a common enemy in Russia. Also, SETF's role and progress with war crime prosecution is only now getting fully underway. So please take this opportunity to contribute to the sustainability of the good work of SETF. Moaz, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Jerry, for for, the, for your words and for everything you're doing for SETF. Um, and now we're getting towards the end of our program and in the remaining um, six minutes, just to try to stick to, to an hour, um, I wanna turn it back over um, to Sister Rasha, um, who, um, has joined us on, on previous uh, on our previous virtual uh, also Ramadan fundraiser um, and can speak a little bit more about the importance of giving um, to the Syrian Emergency Task Force, especially at this time. Mr. Rasha. Okay, thank you so much. So one important thing I learned today is that we have to feel for others. Sometimes we do think that okay, these are people going through calamities, and this is not gonna, this is never gonna happen to me. What I'm trying to say that whatever Syrian people are going through, it can happen to anyone, even individually. Individually, you can go through distress, you can go through some kind of griefs in this life. And what did the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said about that? He said, which is very profound and very touching. If you just if you just understand what the prophet is teaching us, he's saying whoever removes a worldly grief from a believer, Allah will remove from him one of the griefs of the day of resurrection. So, and the, then the prophet said, and whoever alleviates the, the need of a needy person, Allah will alleviate his needs in this world and in the hereafter. And whoever shields, uh, for, or like uh, shields, or just helps, or like protects. hides the 
protects basically yes protects uh, um, a person then Allah will shield him on the in this world and in the hereafter too and the point is Allah this is very profound and very important Allah will always aid you be in your aid and he will, will assist you as long as you are assisting others so don't think all oh, those people are suffering but I'm fine no one knows what can happen no one no one none of the Syrian people like 11 12 years ago thought this is going to happen to their country it's not about the country level it could be individually every one of us can go sometimes during through times of um grief sadness distress what do we do the more you help others the more you you the more you feel for others the more you try to be of a to give a helping hand to others the more this is going to help you not only in this life but it is in this life and in the afterlife too and that's really really amazing it is very important for us to understand that when we are helping one another this is one of the things that is uh, like just Mu'ad just said now it is it, it's a protection for you yes number one it's a protection but there is another thing for those who for those who uh, for those of us who believe that there is an afterlife there is an there is a hereafter when you're gonna meet God one important thing that the prophet said he said that al mar'u fi dhulli sadaqatihi yawm al qiyamah which is whatever donation or charity you gave in this life you will be under the shade of it on the day of resurrection means you will be protected also charity eases hardships and removes calamities and prophet muhammad said give charity without delay for it stands in the way of calamity please try this try to to give something to help others we have talked about the wisdom house the humanitarian work um, um, advocacy anything you can do anything to help those people any way to help the, the women the children there is a pharmacy there is um uh, like educational uh, uh work just if you support this s e s e t f um please please uh, be certain that whatever you're doing this saves you personally from calamities in this life and in the actual life don't say okay these are other people's children not mine no guarantee that you and your kids and your family will be forever in in, in good hand i'm not i don't want to say good but i mean having good time because adversities can happen uh, calamities can hit at any time so this is a way of helping yourself and your family uh, and this is what the prophet said he said that it actually stands in the way of calamity one important thing also that what is the best investment if you think about the people invest in this world and that's fine houses whatever but please please understand when you help needy people this number one like Omar said when Omar said subhanallah when he was maybe Allah save all the, the the oppressed people in the Syrian jail um, he said people would tell him or these soldiers would tell him for me these like are like devils who are telling him there is no god here it's all about torture what i'm telling you what is the best investment then invest in the hereafter so uh one of the that's why the prophet said when you help and you give sadaqa it number one it removes your sins your sins are wiped off your sins complete forgiveness and we're in the month of Ramadan where Eid should be after tomorrow okay so 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 everyone wants yani, if, that our bad deeds would be extinguished forgiveness get the forgiveness of God and the Prophet said that charity extinguishes the sins like water extinguishes fire what's better than that what's easier than that and another thing also is that we believe that charity is like a gate of paradise a gate of paradise so 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 what's keeping us away so another thing which is i personally love so much is when when the prophet said that charity purifies your own self so when you're giving and again financially we need obviously we need help but also also if it's on monthly basis that would be even better if it's like one time donation that's fine but whatever you do whatever you do please understand that this is a purification for your own self you are the one who benefits out of it and, and it's mentioned clearly in the quran in um, uh, chapter number three verse number 92 but that allah said by no means shall you attain righteousness and your purification unless you give freely 
of that which you love. So everyone loves money. Everyone loves investment in this life. That's fine. But invest in the hereafter too. Help others too. Don't think this is too far from me. I live in security and happiness with my family and with my beloved ones. Any calamity can hit at any time. And you're actually saving yourself, saving your beloved ones. So may Allah help us all. And since we're in the month of Ramadan, we want our prayers accepted. When you give a charity, it, it, it it's more likely that your prayers, your dua, your supplications will be accepted. I don't know, do I have more time or not, Ya Mu'ad, but you can join me in whatever I'm talking about. You, 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 you just, I think, gave such powerful and inspirational words, Sister Rasha, and, and it reminds us, you know, uh, especially those of us that are, that are Muslim in the Muslim community that, that are listening to this program of how important it is and, and how much of a priority, I mean, how much um god and you know has has put the the importance of giving that that it really is an investment both in this life and the next and it is something um that that i think is at the end of the day is something that we do for ourselves uh even more so than what we're doing for others that will also be praying for you that will also remember that somebody else stood up for them and in the reminder that no one's protected from the calamities of life yeah. and the Syrian people were never used to war, you know, yeah. Yara, Omar, my mom, everybody that, that you know, Syria is, is a country, despite the, the Assad regime, you know, ruling it for so long is a place where people, it's not, you know, a place that has been used to perpetual war and, and in this horrific, horrific circumstance. And it's a reminder that this can happen anywhere and to anyone that we should look at these people as ourselves. But I, I want to use the last few seconds to just go through this, what you have on your screens here which is $10 provides school supplies for one orphan at the Wisdom House for the entire school year. You know, that's just $10. And then one orphan in school that has had to survive the bombardment of, of his or her school that, uh, that had almost lost a chance at an education, $10 can make sure that they have the supplies they need to, to have hope and to have a future through the Wisdom House supported by SETF. $50 supports one women's center's uh one woman's education at tomorrow's dawn women's center and in our women's center is in the midst of 1270 internally displaced persons camp there are people that walk 30 miles just to come get the free education at the center which gives them the chance to support their families their econ the local economy uh our, our the women graduated from our courses have opened their own salons or went on to become nurses in clinics or started their own sewing uh, stores and a hundred dollars uh, donated gives basic medical supplies to a family in Rukban um, for one month. And so if somebody, if you give one hundred dollars a month, that's one hundred dollars a month that we're trying to find creative ways of getting medicine, bringing it into a besieged camp where we are the only organization working and where our pharmacy, the Hope Pharmacy, is the only pharmacy operating for uh, free of charge for um, 10,000 people in the camp. $300 provides meals and housing to victims of war and their family. And the key witness fund is so important. People like Caesar, like the Gravedigger, these other witnesses that have allowed us to pursue <clears throat> justice and accountability uh, deserve a safety net to have some semblance of security in normal life. So giving to the Wiki Witness Fund is immensely power important as, as Yara and Omar had mentioned. And, and Natalie as well. And then $500 covers the rent for the Wisdom House Kindergarten for a month. Um, and that's really huge because that is a bunch of kids and teachers being able to have some normalcy in the middle of a war zone. And finally, $1,000 uh, allows us to feed the people at, uh, our, rehabil at our, our center called the House of Healing on the border with Turkey and Syria, where I encourage you all to visit. When you go to Turkey, we can facilitate that those that that uh you know just to see where that where that money and that support goes to feeding people that have no other shelter home or anything that live in camps and are simply given shelter by uh, our center in order to get uh important medical treatment for horrific war crimes and and, and, Ill, and war injuries and, and illnesses that they've suffered and so i i want to make sure that we don't go too much over an hour i know we're a little bit over but i want to sincerely thank you sister Russia, and i want to thank Yara and Omar, Natalie, uh, Jerry, um, uh, Abby, and, every, and, and, and everyone that put this important program together. You can go to syriantaskforce.org if you're on 
to stream, you can click on www.syriantaskforce.org slash take uh, dash action. Um, we are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, uh, we're on Instagram, we're even on TikTok. Um, so find us, reach out to us. And I really encourage that, that you make sure that, that you, that you give, but that you also give on, on a regular basis, uh, that, that you are able to, to, to support us month in and month out in whatever it is that you feel has moved you today from the different types of important humanitarian advocacy, uh, and legal work that we do at the Syrian emergency task force. But thank you again for joining us. Thank you for supporting us. Um, and, and just know that, that any, any money that's given to SETF is going to some of the, to people that are in the worst need that are suffering the worst crimes of the 21st century. Um, so God bless you all. And thank you for joining us.